Brilliant. So today we're going to touch on, I have to give uh, Officer Enoch some, some pictures for you. I want you to see some heavy stuff. I want to talk about Jerusalem. That's the big thing in the news. Remember the scriptures teach us to watch as well as pray. When it says to watch, it means to observe what's happening in the news and around you. We have to watch as well as pray. Give me Ecclesiastes 4 and 16. Oftentimes, uh, Christians like to say that nations were done away with, and that is not so, according to scriptures. All the nations mentioned in the Bible are here today. Their names have been changed. When you read, in the, even in the book of Josephus, it tells you that the Greeks were the authors of such mutations. When they conquered, they changed the names of the people. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 16. There is no end of all the people. You see that? There is no end of all the people. So stop thinking that nations were destroyed and finished. No, there's no end of all the people. Go ahead. Even of all that have been before them. Even of all that have been before them. Is, is that it? No, sir. Go ahead. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this is also is vanity and vexation of spirit. The hymn is talking about Esau. That's, we're not rejoicing in him. Give me Genesis 25, 21. So, Jerusalem is the white man's burden. Jerusalem is the white man's burden. And I want to start with Genesis chapter 25. And you know the verse, verse 21. We want to start right there. Genesis chapter 25, verse 21. Many times people often ask, well, uh, what color was Noah and his three sons? Black. When did the white man come? And the white man came in Genesis 25, right here. Prior to this, everybody was black. Now when you get to Genesis 25, 21, you read the origin of the so-called white man. Let's read that. This is the, this is the now I'm going to say something heavy. Some of you are new. You may not get it. But this is the uh, re-emergence of Cain in the earth. I just went deep on it, but I'm going to leave it right there. I'm just going to put it there on the table and leave it there. And in a few years, y'all will catch it. Genesis Read 25, that. 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? If the Lord has blessed me, why am I having trouble in my stomach? Go ahead. And she went to inquire of the Lord. Come on. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Remember, the word Genesis means uh, beginning. It comes from the Hebrew word barashat, which means beginnings. This is the beginning of nations here. Go ahead. Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Two manner means two different types. Two different types of people shall be separated. Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Physically stronger, mentally stronger, able to endure great hardships. Go ahead. And the elder shall serve the younger. Now, that's a prophetic prophecy. An elder is destined, their destiny is to be a servant to the elder, to the other. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold... There were twins in her womb. Now, we know that they were not identical because the verse above it says, and two manner of people shall be separated. So this is what's called fraternal twins. Go ahead. And the first came out red. That's the first difference in color right there. Right there, they make a color distinction. The color distinction was not Japheth because you get some people that say Japheth is the white man. No, Japheth was the same color as his mother and father, black. The color distinction comes in right here. Go ahead. And the first came out red all over like in hairy garment. Because the red blood shows through his skin. Go ahead. And they called his name Esau. And you know they're hairy because if you take away a Gillette razor, just leave him in a cave for a day or two. You look what comes out. A damn werewolf. <laughs> Go ahead. And they called his name Esau. Esau means wasted away is he. His, his brown pigment was wasted away. Go ahead. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. Now, they never mentioned Jacob's color because Jacob looked just like his mother and father, Isaac and Rebekah, Noah, his parents, everybody on the planet. 
The only difference was Esau. Go ahead. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. He was 60. Go ahead. And the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Come on. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Mm -hmm. And Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Edom, which means red. Edom, which means this is a, a different word than Adam. You got these people that try to confuse you. They always say, let's go to the Hebrew. And they'll leave out that one wa in the middle of the characters and say they're the same word. They're not the same word. Edom and Adam, two different words. So I saw a movie. I want to go to this movie. I gave it to you. It's called La Genesis. I saw this movie years ago when I did Hollywood Knows the Truth. So I want to, this was the best illustration, the best movie of Genesis 25. Nobody else has done what this author did. Okay, it was done in Africa, and it was amazing that he had the understanding to show it uh, and to show exactly what the scriptures is saying. Do you have the movie? Yeah. Isaac, read the subtitles. Isaac, my father, fell in love. She became his wife. And assuaged the loss of his mother. That was how we live. Before the world was torn asunder. Lies, lies, lies. Liar. Since the dawn of time, children have been into rift and discord. Father turned his back on me, his eldest son. Mother cut me off. And you are to blame. You, my younger brother. But in my dreams, God ordained that tomorrow I shall inherit justice. He, he, he whose word is unchanging promised that fire will strike you down. His bitter well is deadly. Father, why does the hunter want to kill you? He is my brother Esau. Why does he want to kill you? We were children at the time. At dawn, Esau would go hunting. One afternoon, I made lentil soup. Esau returned from the hunt with nothing. Hunger gripped him. You didn't catch anything. Nothing, and I'm hungry. I could sell myself into I could sell myself into slavery for some food. Wait until night, then you'll eat. Jacob, my beloved younger brother, I beg you. I'm going to die. Die. Oh, sake. Go ahead then. That way I'll be the eldest son. Be the eldest if you want. I don't care. Just give me some food. 
Are you sure about that? Kali. Swear. Kali, Malaira. Swear. I don't believe you. I swear. Kali, Yanama. My brother swore. He said, I, Esau, son of Isaac, descendant of Abraham and Noah, I swear before God that I sell my birthright for your soup. For some lentil soup? Exactly. That's the story. That was it. So this was done by Sheikh Umar Sisosko. This was done back in 1999. And this was an excellent, if y'all get a chance, y'all should, uh, it costs like five, it's free on, on YouTube, it's free on YouTube. Just look at it, very, very good. Y'all, so you're gonna say something? That, that, that was, you, 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 you're almost like speechless when you, when you see how well this was put together. Mm -hmm. And it shows that this information is not just with us. Right. The most high, this is information that, that the nations know about. The different people, everybody know about this information. It's just, we have been put into a stupor to think that the Bible is talking about fairy tales and all that. But the Bible is, is what we're seeing up here. And it's beautiful that he had, the, he had everything right. So that means he knew the scriptures. Exactly. Yeah, he, he knew the 12, scriptures. He was That's 12, exactly 16, it. and 17. Back to that soup. When the Paul addressed that soup thing. Because we tend to forget. And we tend to like to try to save people. Paul said, no, let me remind y'all of somebody. Go ahead. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat... Because there was meat in the, in the soup. Right. And it wasn't done yet because that's why Jacob said, wait until night in the movie. Esau said, I want to eat it now. Wait until night. It ain't ready. I'm going to eat that same red pottage right there with the blood still in. I want to eat it. Because that's how Esau likes their meat. That's how he likes his meat. Y'all know that. Medium rare. What is that? Uh, what's that new thing? What's the steak tatas -ta -ta. are called? Yeah. Yeah. I like it blood. Disgusting. Go ahead. Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. So it wasn't the lentil beans. <laughs> it was the meat. That's what he wanted. That's the way this man liked his meat. Rare. Go ahead. <laughs> for you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing. Because he was the eldest son. He was to be the heir. Go ahead. He was rejected. He was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Though he cried for repentance, the Lord said, no, I'm not accepting you. Now, that wasn't just because he sold his birthright. Remember what he told Rebecca. He, she, the Lord told her, the elder shall serve the younger. That was the prophecy from the beginning. Okay, everybody understand that? So now it just had to play itself out. So what if Esau repents? You no, know, the Bible says, though they cry for it, there's no repentance. So some of you church boys might have uh, white girlfriends on the side. I don't know. There's no repentance. I don't care how she cries, Miss Laura crying. The Lord said, I don't care about them tears. That means nothing to me. I said, no. You all understand that, huh? They don't understand it, but you're going to get it. Once you learn the Bible, you know there's no repentance for them. Hey, hey Bishop, if they're struggling with Christmas... <laughs> They ain't going to get this. <laughs> Do y'all understand that? Uh -huh. All right. Let's see. All Go right. to Genesis 27. Let's get you. to their blessing. Just testing you. I know you brothers know better. Genesis 27. Let's start at verse 34. The book of Genesis, chapter 27 and verse 24. 34. 34. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, thy brother came with subtlety and hath subtility. taken subtility and hath taken away thy blessing. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. What was the two times? The birthright and now this blessing. Because when this one, because Jacob was about, I'm not Jacob, Isaac was about to die. And his mother and Jacob's mama, Rebecca, said, go in there and make like you your brother Esau. He said, Ma, I can't go in there like I'm Esau. I don't smell like him. I'm not hairy like him. Ma, she said, listen, put this goat's hair on. Rub the smell all on you. Because you know you got, Esau got that funny smell. Y'all know how when, you, when them white folks get sweaty or in the rains, they got that smell. It's a certain animalistic smell. 
Like, cave cave yeah. smell. So she said, here, put this on. And she said, change your voice. Go ahead, change your voice. Hello? <laughs> hello, hello, father. Come on, dad. Come on, dad. So, <laughs> so Jacob said, Ma, I might get cursed. She said, listen, if there's any curse, it's going to fall on me. Just do what I say, boy. Go in and do what I say. And he went. And now she did it because of what the Lord told her in Genesis 25. So she wasn't being wicked. So Jacob goes in there, asks for the blessing. He got it. Now the real Esau comes in, and now he's all upset. Come on, where you was at? Verse 36. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. And behold, now he hath taken... Now, that, now, how come nobody points out that Esau lied? The first time, Jacob did not supplant Esau. He willingly gave it up. He said, I don't... Yeah, he hated it. I don't care about no daggone birthright. He going to say he supplanted me these two times. Come on. He took away my birthright. And behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Has thou not reserved a blessing Even for that's me? That's really a lie, technically, because the Lord said the blessing that, J- that Isaac was to give was to be for Jacob. Mm-hmm. That's what he told J- Rebekah. Yep. Go ahead. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? You know what's heavy about that? Remember from the time of Noah, you had uh, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, right? I want you to look at what he said. Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. Meaning everybody else is to be a what? A servant. So this is mentioned several times. People just overlook it. Go ahead. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Meaning you're going to live in all the best places on the earth. Go ahead. And of the dew of heaven from above. You're going to be, you're going to cover the earth like the dew of heaven. That means everywhere. Esau is everywhere. Go ahead. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Now he just explained how Esau would live in the best places on earth and how they would live everywhere by their sword. How did they get in South Africa? By the sword. How did they get in America? By the sword. Every place you look where they're at, they got there by what? The sword. That's why Christ said, he that liveth by the sword. He was talking about Rome. That was Esau. (laughs) Go ahead. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. You want to be a servant to your brother. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. That happened in, write this down, 2 Kings 8 verse 20, when they broke the yoke from under Solomon. So now, from there, by thy sword shalt thou live. Watch this, watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 2. Deuteronomy 2 and 20. By thy sword shalt thy live. Let's see when they first started to live that blessing out. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 20. And read down. That also was count, accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time. And the Ammonites called them Zamzumims, a people great and many and tall, as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. Let's see who he's talking about. Go ahead. As he did to the children of Esau which dwelt in Seir when he destroyed the Horums from before them. And they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead even unto this day. So Esau took the land of Seir, Mount Seir, from the Horums. The Horums are the Horites. The Horums are the Horites. Get Genesis 15, verse 5 and 6. Write that down. Mount Seir belonged to the Horites or Horums originally. Esau went and slaughtered them. Verse 5. And Genesis chapter 14, verse 5. And in the 14th year came Chedar, Chedar Loomer, and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephims and Ashtoreth, Carnium, and the Zuzims in Ham, and the Emims in Shavah, Carithium, 
And the Horites in their Mount Seir. See that? It says, and the Horites in their Mount Seir. Many times in the Bible, you'll see more time the word Horites than Horims, but it's the same people. Go ahead. Unto Eliphoran, which is by the wilderness. Give me Genesis 36 and verse 1, please. Genesis 36 and 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 36 and verse 1. Now these are the generations of Esau. Who is Edom? So Esau is Edom, as we read in Genesis 25. Jump down to verse uh, 6 through 9. And Esau took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all the persons of his house and his cattle and all his beasts and all his substance, which he had got in the land of Canaan and went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. For their riches were more than, than that they might dwell together. So write this down. Esau was rich at this time. Esau was rich. He was not poor and broke at this time. Go ahead. For their riches were more than that they might dwell together. And the land wherein they were strangers could not bear them because of their cattle. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. Everybody got that, right? Everybody got that. Now watch this. These are the names of Esau. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want, I want to say something. Esau, sometime later, sometime, I'm jumping up ahead historically, Esau took Jerusalem during the Babylonian captivity. Mm -hmm. This was around the year 606 BC. Esau took, listen to what I'm saying, Esau took Jerusalem. Not only did they take the land of Mount Seir from the Horites. Now they said, you know what? We want the Holy Land. So go to Obadiah. Go to Obadiah chapter 1. So now I'm going to show y'all something. I'm going to show y'all something. Hmm. Now I wanted to bring Obadiah in later, but I think I'm going to go to it now. Read that. So, so far, for the doubters who's watching online, where's the camera? Doubters watching online. Some of these morons say, oh, the Arabs are the Edomites. And you know, we found, I think I told you who started that stuff. You had uh, black women in England married to white people, married to white men. So they were searching the scriptures to prove that their husbands was not the devil, the Bible speaks, and that their kids was not the devil. No, your husband's the devil, and your chillings is the devil. So get mad now. So... What was I talking about? Oh, oh Edom. Yeah. So, dang. You know I get sidetracked. Obadiah 1 and 1. Obadiah 1 and 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God, concerning Edom. Concerning who? Edom. Edom. E-D-O-M. Meaning the red people. Go ahead. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Now, this has not occurred yet. This is about to be fulfilled, though. There's going to come a heathen of the nations that's going to, be, that's going to have influence over the nations and say, let's rise up against them. Watch who he's really talking about. Go ahead. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So Obadiah prophesied that Esau is greatly despised. Nobody likes him. All nations really tolerate him because he got what? Power. Go ahead. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. So Esau is a prideful people. Very prideful. Go ahead. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Now originally it was talking about what, brothers? Mount Seir. Mount Seir. But write this down. During the dark ages, it's referring to the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. I'm going to say it again. During the time of the Dark Ages, it's making reference to the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Hence the word Caucasian. Where does the word Caucasian come from? The Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's where the word comes from, the Caucasus Mountains. You get the regular peon white, don't even understand that. They say, I'm German Caucasian. I'm Jewish Caucasian. I'm Italian Caucasian. I'm French Caucasian. So what does that word Caucasian mean? I don't know. Yeah, one dude said it means colorless. Yeah. I said, well, you're not colorless. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you're red. You're not colorless. Exactly. It's somebody colorless. Read on. Whose habitation is high, 
That's meaning, they, meaning they like to live in skyscrapers, tall buildings. It reflects the mountains, right? That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? In order to say that, you got to have what, brothers? Power. And when the power they got is thermonuclear power. Right, that's that sword and from Genesis 27, the art of war. You know, Esau got a gun that can shoot around corners. Any of y'all see that? Yeah. You aim it and it goes around a corner. The whole barrel goes to king and can shoot around a the corner. They got all kind of weapons. Read that again. Who shall bring me down to the ground, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. What's the symbol of America? The eagle. What was the symbol of Spain? France? Germany? Russia, uh, uh, Britain, the daggone eagle. They've, they love that symbol. Why? It's a bird of prey. The eagle don't sit around. The eagle will hunt you down, and the eagle can see far distances. Far. They stay on the highest mountain, and they look down and can see our mouse run across a field. And they're the highest flying bird, them, them things. So Esau likes the characteristic of that thing. Read that again. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. And though thou set, that's talking about space travel. What did they do in 1969? They went to the moon and said the eagle has landed. You got me? Pay attention. You got me? Yep. This is for all you doubters out there. No, no. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The eagle has land. And you know what's funny about that? It's not even funny. I just love Bible prophecy being fulfilled, knowing that we are in, the pro in prophetic times. You'll hear some ignorant brothers, some of you might be sitting up in here, that say, oh, that was fake. Esau never went to the moon because there's a, um, a firmament around the earth that you can't pass. Oh, really? Give me, watch this. Give me Isaiah 14. Give me Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, and I want, I'm going to get to the point. I want verse 13 and 14. Yep. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13. Watch this. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. It's still talking about the same thing, space travel. Go ahead. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Meaning I'll have the Israelites in slavery in North America. So let's do a process of elimination. So that means if the moon landing, if they don't go to space, and that means this next part here about I will sit, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That means we're not slaves in North America then. Because you can't separate the top part of the verse and say that's fake and then say that this bottom part is real. Watch the next part of the verse. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. That's talking about uh, flying in airplanes. So that means all the planes, we're, we're really at home and they put a gadget on our head and we're imagining we're in airplanes. We're really not in airplanes when we're, in the, when we're there. So you can't say one part of the scripture is fake but then accept the slavery part in the north and accept the plain part. You see how stupid that is? Stop listening to dumb, black, Hebrew Israelites who don't know scriptures and listen to these atheist white folks who always got an agenda. Y'all better believe what this Bible says. 100%. Y'all understand that? All right, all right. Let's go on. Yeah, you got something? What you got? You got it? Enoch. The moon landing was, uh, I believe, in 1969. Yes. And they, they minted this coin called the Susan B. Anthony coin in 1979 to celebrate what took place 10 years before. This is the Susan B. Anthony coin. The eagle has landed. That's the coin right there. And they got rid of it. And I sent you, I sent you two. That's the, that's the actual coin. I sent you to you in color. That's the moon under its feet. That's the eagle. And that's the stars around it. See? So that's in color. So yep. each star said, you know, that's Obadiah. That's why over time... As the understanding came out, they started to get rid of that coin. They said, that's too close to the quarter. Let's get rid of it. But no, they got rid of it because they understand that that's Obadiah. Exactly. That's why they got that's rid of it. it it's, 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 it's bringing out too much understanding. That, that alone is Obadiah in itself. Exactly. So when people say, how do you know the Bible is real? Just read this to them, Obadiah. Boom. They can't get away from Deuteronomy 28. They can't get away from Obadiah. They can't get away from the pro Isaiah 14. They cannot. Right. Get away from it. And it says, e pluribus unum, and that coin, our enterprise, I believe it's success. Right? Uh, from many one. From many one, right. That's what that means. Right. right. <laughs> Watch this. Go back to Obadiah now. 
Obadiah. Go back to Obadiah. Obadiah, verse 4. Uh-huh. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down. From that time, America's been coming down. Okay? Now, now we just read. Remember saying an ambassador is sent. What verse was that? An ambassador is sent among the heathen, saying, let us rise up against her in battle. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. Jump over to verse 12. Verse 12. But... Thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, and the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Now you see verse 12 where it says Judah became a stranger, right? Mm -hmm. Write that precept down because when you get to the New Testament, remember in Ephesians 2 and 12, it says we were strangers to the covenant. And people say, oh, that means the other nations. No. Judah, the Israelites became strangers from the time we went into captivity. Y'all see that right there? What verse you in Captain Isaac? That was verse 12. Go ahead. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Verse 13. Read. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate. Find me the verse that says all the men of thy confederacy. I'm not looking at it. I'm flipping through the Bible. It, should, it might be verse 10, 7. Ver, verse 7. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. Now Esau, particularly America, remember Obadiah 1 through 4 specifying what group of Esau? Hello? America. France didn't go to the moon. Okay, Germany didn't go to the moon. It's specifying the United States of America. Is everybody with me? Now read verse 7 again. All the men of thy confederacy. All the men of thy confederacy. You got to think about who's confederate with the United States of America. All her European allies. Go ahead. Have brought thee even to the border. The men that, are, that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. They that eat thy bread. Remember, East America sends foreign aid to all countries. It says, they that eat thy bread, what? Have laid a wound under thee. Have laid a wound under thee. Go ahead. There is none understanding in him. So there's no understanding in Esau. They can't believe that what's going to happen is going to happen. All the allies of America, they're going to turn on your friendly neighborhood white man. Now watch this. I'm going to show you that same thing in Revelation 17. Get that. Revelation 17 verse 15. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, where the whore sitteth, where America sitteth, meaning in everywhere, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Because America's military is everywhere. Go ahead. And the ten horns which thou sawest the upon ten the... ten horns is the European Union. Go which, ahead. Which thou sawest upon the beast these shall hate the whore. These shall hate America. Go ahead. And shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. They all going to turn on America. That's why Obadiah said all the men of your confederacy that eat your bread, they're going to turn on you. They're going to put a wound in you. See, this Bible, that's why I don't have time to play with nobody. You don't believe the Bible? Get the hell out of here. Just go drop dead and die. Hey, they don't have to believe the Bible. They're going to feel the Bible. Exactly. You're going <laughs> to feel it. Go ahead. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast. Meaning all the nations are supporting. The European Union is supporting America for a time. Go ahead. Until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Go ahead. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city. That's America. Go ahead. Which reigneth over the kings of the earth. America's top nation number one. So now, so now, let's go on back. Now, let's go on back. So, uh, when, during the time of Obadiah, when Esau, because that was a Babylonian onslaught, the Babylonians was jacking us up. Esau was helping them catch us, and they took our land. Get First Ezra 4 and 50. So during the time when Persia came in power around 539, there was a big banquet. 
And the king said, I'm going to give my bodyguards a contest. And whoever gives the wisest saying, I'm going to give him wealth, riches, and whatever he desires, I'm going to give him. So Zerubbabel was one of the king's top bodyguards. Like today, you got the Secret Service. Y'all heard of the Secret Service? So you mean to tell me that our forefather Zerubbabel was a sellout? No, he was not a sellout. But he could break bones when he fight people. Zerubbabel was no joke. Because in order to be the king's bodyguard, you had to prove you could throw down. So he was the third bodyguard for the king. So Zerubbabel won no punk. So watch this, 1 Ezra 4 and 50. Now, Zerubbabel won the contest. So the king says, ask me what you will. Go ahead. 1 Ezra chapter 4 and verse 50. And that all the country which they hold should be free without tribute. And that the Edomites should give over the villages of the Jews which they then they held. See that? And that the Edomites should give over the land which they now what? Which, they, which then they held. So because from the time of Babylon, Esau had taken the land. Esau always coveted our homeland. I'm going to say it again. The white man has always coveted our homeland. So now, from there, give me 1 Maccabees 13. So after Babylon, you had Persian media. After Persian media, you had Greek captivity. Now we're doing the time of the Greeks. So during his Greek captivity, you had a man named John Hycranus. He was the son of Simon Maccabee. I'm going to say it again. John Hycranus was the son of Simon Maccabee. He forced Esau, he forced the whites that remained in the land of Idumea to convert, get circumcised, and follow the laws of the Bible. Now, read 1 Maccabees 13 and 53, and then over here, pay attention. I want you to go to the Jewish Virtual Library. Go to Google, Jewish Virtual Library. Isaac, read that. First Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 53. And when Simon saw that John, his son, was a valiant man, he made him captain of all the hosts, and he dwelt in Gazara. So now, Simon, as I said, Simon was the father of John. His name became known as John Hycranus. Now here, I want you to see the little... Search the library, type in Edomites. Edomites. X out of that, type in Edomites. All right, read that, Captain Isaac. Traditional enemies of the Israelites. The Edomites were the descendants of Esau. That's the white man. Go ahead. Who often battled the Jewish nation. Just like even today. Edom was in southeast Palestine, stretched from the Red Sea at Elath to the Dead Sea and encompassed some of Israel's most fertile land. The Edomites attacked Israel under Saul's rulership. King David would later defeat the rogue nation, annexing their land. At the fall of the first temple, the Edomites attacked Judah and looted, was Babylon. And looted the temple, accelerating its destruction. The Edomites were later forcibly converted into Judaism by John Hycranus, and then became an active part of the Jewish people. Famous Edomites include Herod, who built the second temple. Well, he reinforced the second temple. He didn't build it. He reinforced it. So what I want y'all to see, John Hycranus, um, he forced them to convert. He gave them the ultimatum. You either, if you don't uh, convert and follow our laws, we're going to kill all of you. So they all decided to convert and keep the laws. Now, uh, I want you to go back to Google. Bear with me. Type in the Herods. Okay, you see the name Antipater, Herod's father. This guy Antipater, he saved Julius Caesar's life. And Julius Caesar put, made this guy like a top councilman. And from him, he was one of the first converts. He had gave birth to Herod, okay? Now, what I want you all to see you got Doris, he married Herod the Great, married Doris, and I want you to see that second one. See, Mariamne the first, executed in 29 BC, of Maccabean descent. Okay, she was one of the Maccabees' daughters. Okay, it says, granddaughter of high priest Hyrcanus the second, a Hasmonean. Hasmonean. Now I'm gonna go down. You had another Antipater than Alexander Aristobulus, 
Now, you see the one, Herod Philip. Okay, let me move over. Uh, Archelaus, let me go down. See, it says Matthew 2 and 2. Then Herod Antipas, and you see Matthew 14, 1 through 11. They give the scriptures, okay? Uh, you see Luke 3 and 1, Philip II. Uh, Hero, uh, Herodias, and you see Herod Agrippa the first. Come on, Salome, she was the guy, the girl that danced and wanted the head of John the Baptist. That was her. This whole this family was huge. Herod Agrippa the uh, second. This is the one Paul spoke to and said that uh, thou um, thou art. Uh, we're gonna read it in a minute. Okay. Now watch this, Captain Isaac. Get me Luke. Chapter 1 and 5, I believe it is. Luke 1 and 5 about the Herods. Yeah, Antipater, that Idumean, he rescued Julius Caesar in Alexandria. And he was made the chief minister of Judea. After him, he put his son in power. Read that. Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea. Nobody ever questions this Herod. How was this Edomite the king of Judah? Because that's what Judea stands for, Judah. Herod was an Idumean, a white man. He was put there by Rome because Rome saw fit because Antipater, when he saved Julius Caesar, this family knew all the customs of Israel. Why? Because of the conversion. So they said, How, what better that we're all the same people? Put them over these, these black Jews, these nigger Jews. That's what was going on. Everybody understand that? Give me Acts 13 and 1. Watch this. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Acts chapter 13 and verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called nigger. And right. Now that nigger comes from the nigger river or Niger area. They're changing their, their name now. They're Niger. Niger. The hell is this? But and that ain't the part we want. What? This is the part we want. Read. And Lucius of Cyrene and Menean. Which had been brought up with Herod. Which had been brought up with Herod. Go ahead. The Tetrarch. The Tetrarch. So you had Israelites in school with these Herodians learning scriptures from the time Paul was one of them too. That's why the Pharisees said about Christ, how know if this man let us having never learned. He didn't sit in our schools of education because in our schools that Israel had set up, the Herodians were there. Okay, learning. Learning all our customs. Now watch this. Get Acts 26, like you see right there on the screen. See Herod Agrippa 2, the second. It says Acts 25, verse 13 to 26, and then 32. Okay, then you see next to it, in Acts 25, it says Bern Bernice. Y'all see that? See Herod Agrippa the second and Bernice. When you read Acts 25 and Acts 26, you're reading about Agrippa. You're reading about this Herodian, Herod Agrippa. And Bernice, let me get it. Let me get it so I'll be along, run, right, reading along with y'all. 25, 13, that's what I want. Read 13. 25 and verse 13. And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. So these were two Amalekites, two so-called Jews, okay, converts. So when we get to chapter 26, 1 to 3, go ahead. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Verse 3 is the point. Read. Especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. How was Agrippa? An expert in all customs and things pertaining to the Jews, he went to the schools, our schools, and learned. He was a convert. You with me? Okay, now, from there, from there, get Revelation 2.9. This is what Christ said about him. <laughs> White man, I hate these verses. <laughs> Read that, Revelation 2.9. Revelation 2 verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. But thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, 
but are the synagogue of Satan. But are the synagogue. Now watch this. You get some dumb Israelites that say, no, that's talking about the scribes and Pharisees. It's not talking about the scribes and Pharisees. I'm going to prove it. Here. Now you see what it says, then we say they are Jews and are what? They are not the Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan. Watch this. Give me uh, John 8, verse 33, and then we're going to jump to 37. John 8, verse 33, and then we're going to jump to 37. John 8, verse 33. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall, ye shall be made free? So this generation of the Jews said, We were never slaves. What are you talking about? We shall be made free. We were not slaves. Jump down to verse 37. It's about their generation. Go ahead. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. What did Christ say about them? I know that you are Abraham's seed. I know that you are Jews. I know you are Abraham's seed. Go ahead. But you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. So when we go back to Revelation 2 and 9, Christ already acknowledged that they were Israelites. He said, I know you all are Abraham's seed. So Revelation 2 and 9 is talking about something else. Read it again. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That was the Herodians. That was Herod's family line. The family line of Antipater, Herod the Great, so forth and so on. Everybody with us? All right, all right. Good, good, good. I don't want to lose nobody. Give me Matthew 11. So, this was the time of Rome. In the time of Rome, Rome took Jerusalem, Okay. Give me Matthew 11 and 12. The book of Matthew, chapter 11 and verse 12. Come on. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. So was somebody jumping up in the sky, beating up the most high? No. The kingdom of heaven that was suffering violence was the Israelites. Read it again. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Who was dominating the land of Israel? Rome. The Edomites. Rome. The Edomites. Very good. Give me Luke 21 and 20. So the kingdom of heaven that suffered violence was the Israelites. We are the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> that that might have went over some of y'all head. What? I don't feel like I'm nobody. But when you learn this Bible, you're going to realize how great you are. Mm -hmm. Read that. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. This is what Matthew 11 and 12 was talking about. Christ said, when you see Jerusalem compassed with army, meaning the Roman armies. Go ahead. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. Know that the destruction thereof is near. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea. You Israelites in the land of Judah, go ahead. Flee. Run. To the mountains. To Africa. Go ahead. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And you that in the midst depart out. Read. And let not them that are in the countries enter there. Because into. you had Israelites who had, we had sanctuaries in uh, Damascus. We had uh, sanctuaries in Egypt. So, and Niger, as we read earlier. We had sanctuaries every place. Christ said, those Israelites that's outside of this land, don't come back now. You hear? Read. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written. Meaning everything the prophet said from the time of Moses. May be fulfilled. May be fulfilled. What verse was that? That was verse 22. Go ahead. But woe unto them that are with child. You women that are having ch children, go ahead. And to them that give suck in those days. Especially you breastfeeding women. Go ahead. For there shall be great distress in the land. It's going to be so terrible that the women that have kids, they're going to eat their babies. When you read Deuteronomy 28, okay, around verse 49 through 54, it tells you we resorted to cannibalism, eating our children, because Rome cut off all food from entering Jerusalem. Food and water. And the women who had children, we were eating their babies. Go ahead. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Mm -hmm. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Right. The wrath, like y'all just said, that's that violent that take it by force. Go ahead. 
and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The Israelites shall fall by the edge of the sword. Come on. And shall be led away captive into all nations. We were made slaves in all nations. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And the white man, the white man shall take Jerusalem. That's what he's saying. Shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the times of the Gentile rulership be over. Now, the Roman Empire. Give me baby names. Baby name. I gave it to you. Baby names. Put the cover up on the, on the screen. Let me know if you got it. R right there. This is a book. This is a good book to get because it gives one bit of information that speaks volumes. What you learn about Rhodes Scholars, Esau has a term called Rhodes Scholars. You'll have a thick book that's filled with garbage, ain't nothing in the book. But there's one nugget in there, one sentence, one paragraph that's not meant for us to read. It's meant for their scholars to pick up and go, okay, in this book here, it reveals a secret. Now go to the page that I gave you for that book. Y'all see it? Classical Baby Names by Judith Chopria. Now, you see Esau. Blow it up big. I want everybody to see it. Now, Esau means wasted away as he. They got the word. It means hairy there. That's not correct. But that ain't the point. We want to go to the bottom. Go all the way to the bottom. Read that, Captain Isaac. Of interest, according to the commentaries on Hebrew scripture, Esau is considered a significant character in world history and the forefather of the Roman Empire. So who were the Romans? That's right. That's a secret that both the average Christian don't know this stuff. Christian, I don't know. Japheth? No, they weren't Japhet. They Esau. Right. Here you got the Edomites telling us, I'm not an Edomite, I'm not an Edomite. Your own people said you are. Exactly. So now what you gonna do? <laughs> now, now in case because people say, I think y'all are misinterpreting Genesis 25 and Obadiah. Well, now we got the scholars. Yeah. Now we here you go. Now boom. What are you going to say now? Right. He co-signed on it. There so you now go. what you going to do? Give me Jewish civilization. Now we got another book. We got another book. Don't listen. Your arm's too short to box with God. I always remember that. This book, I got that when we used to go to Strand's bookstore. Picture history of Jewish civilization. That's what the people used to come in the aisle and try to tell us we was in the wrong section. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you like it better to go to the African-American right. section? Said, no, no, no. I said, we're in the right place, <laughs> but you're in the wrong section. <laughs> Give me the page. Give me the page. Right there. There, it said, blow it up big. I want the highlights blown up big. That's page 94. Write it down. Let's write it down. Hey, there's something. Yeah, Isaac, read that. All I want is the underlying part, portion. Okay. Lord of the universe, is it not enough for your sons what the evil kingdom of Edom, Rome, did to them? Boom. That is another scholar. <laughs> Come on. That you must also send the kingdom of Ishmael against us? That's the Arabs. Jump down. Restore it to the Jews, and there will be a great hatred between them and the children of Esau, Rome. Boom. What are you, you going to say now? What do you got to say now, you Dumb Christian apologetics. What do you got to say? You don't know anything. Just be quiet and listen and learn. So now, so now, give me the next book. I want the New Testament. You can X out if we don't need it anymore. X out. You can X out. Give me the New Testament in New Testament world pictures. I want that book. Pagan Rome. Pagan Rome, pagan Rome fell around the year 193 AD uh, at the hands of Septimius Severus and the black gladiators, which were Jews that were with him. Pagan Rome fell. Pagan Rome fell around 193 AD at the hands of a black gladiator named Septimius Severus. Now, when you look up that name on Time Life books, it tells you he was of African descent. They say that because they call all black people what? African. But the Septimius Severus was an Israelite. Mm -hmm. So after that time period came ushered in the Holy Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. But the problem always is, they say, but there were no black people in Rome. There were no black Jews in Rome in the Asia Minor. That's not true. 
Give me, uh, you know what I want, Isaac? Give me Acts, is it, six, is it 16 or Acts 18? About uh, the Jews in Italy. Yes, thank you. This is the book we want. Watch this. Because you get these dumb, stupid, evil Christians that say, there were no black people. Acts, Where are we going? Acts 18 and 2. Yes, read that. And found a certain Jew named Aquila. Born in Pontius, lately come from Italy. Lately come from where? Italy. Uh huh. With his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius, Claudius Caesar, had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. Claudius Caesar. That gives you history. You can look them up. People know the Bible so mythical. It's a fairy tale. They give you all these historic names. See our people. Our people are simple as hell. Now this is the book. It was comprised by William H. Steffens, The New Testament World in Pictures. Now, we're going to go to some of those pictures. Now, what I want you to see, this is during the time of the gladiators. Can y'all see that the, in the pictures, the man fighting the bear? Do you see Afro there? I can see it. I see the woolly beard in the people. You might have to zoom it in because... The, 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 the uh, Edomites, they put their spirit on us and we don't see what we're seeing. So let you got to zoom it in. Let me see the, the words. Yeah, you see the picture there, and he's fighting some kind of animal. Mm -hmm. Go over to the words. <laughs> Gladiator fighting a bear. Mm. It's, it's on the online. They had us fighting bears, lions, panthers, panthers. elephants, rhinoceri were popular fighting animals in the arena, 1 Corinthians 15, 32. Mm. Go down to the next picture, please. Yeah, we that was ain't, fighting. No, that they, ain't blind they, we here. was their sport. Hey, Bishop, that's not blonde hair on that man's head. Exactly. Okay. You see this brother fighting a bear. Look, look at the words. Gladiator fighting a bear. When y'all see movies like Spartacus, mm -hmm. that was us in the arenas. That was us, our people. Okay. I, give me the, what? Yeah, they gave him a little dagger to fight the bear. You see that little knife in his head? Go to the words. Put sound on the mic so people can hear you. It says prisoners were put into the arena. What is that? With, uh, wild, with animal. wild animals. Sometimes they had no protection and were quickly torn to death. Read above it. I'm sorry. Uh, the gladiator. The gladiator. I can't see it. The gladiator the glad wears only a, a leather, leather covering, covering over his shoulders and loins and has only a knife for the battle. You see that? They were toying with us. Yep. And this is what the Romans were doing to us. You can, you can get it if you want. Give me the next picture. X out of this. Oh, this one. Oh, thank you. This one. Look at the brother. Y'all see the afro on him? F fighting a bull. Fighting a bull with a daggone short sword. That's what they had us doing in an arena. That We was their sport. They were bet on the animals. So they wanted right. us to lose. And we would still win because Jake is mighty. We would, we would still kill them things occasionally. Exactly. Exactly. Let's go to the next picture. X out of this. Give me the next picture right under that one. I put four pictures there. So when people say there were no black people in Greece and Rome, you don't know what you're talking about. Just be quiet. Here's another one. Y'all see the brothers boxing right there? Mm -hmm. Let's get the words. Let's see what they say. Look at this. African box. Now, we know they're not Africans. Mm -hmm. These were Israelites in Rome. Right. Boxing scene. Mm -hmm. I like this bottom one here. You can see the woolly hair on them right there. Mm -hmm. So the same thing we was, they had us doing in the arenas back then, we're doing today. Wearing the same thing. Wearing the with the boxing glove, the same thing. And notice they got scripture, 1 Corinthians 9. See, the scholars of society know we were in captivity at this time. It's your everyday average peon Christian, white man, as dumb as a rock. They don't know nothing. Okay, give me the next picture, please. Next page. Jewish immigration into Asia Minor is recorded first in the time of Antiochus III. He ordered that 2,000 Jewish families be moved to Lydia and Phrygia from the Tigris-Euphrates region 
During the Hasmonean period, that's the time of Maccabees, records exist of Jews living in many cities and regions of Asia Minor. Now look, it's number 71. It says, prisoners in chains. Come on, can I see it? Basically from Smyrna, that's one of the seven churches, third century. Let's look at, let's look at them. Hold down. These are black men. Do y'all see that? With yokes of iron on their neck. So we're not making nothing up. We know exactly what we're saying. <laughs> now, it's a sad thing that we're in captivity, but I'm laughing because we got the evidence. We got the proof. Give me. So now, Septimius Severus overthrew the pagan Roman Empire. Sometime after that, ushered in the Holy Roman Empire where blacks were ruling. During, and they call it also the Dark Ages. And Esau, what you got? You getting something for us, y'all? Yeah. You want to get it now before I continue yeah. on? Yeah. Uh, I was trying to send it over there, but. Um, what the bishop was going through, he was showing that about the gladiators. And there might have been some question about those, uh, about those images. Wait. So were Jews in Italy? Oh, absolutely. So guess what? Court. Cornelius of the Italian band. <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all all right? See, sometimes you have to go and get the words because Esau would do the Jedi mind trick on you and say, you're not seeing what you're seeing. So sometimes you have to get the words and let, let him tell you straight out. Then you're going to say, you, you're deaf, you can't hear anything. But, you know, pictures speak a thousand words. So maybe... Your eyes are focused on the words in the books. This is a book entitled Imperial Rome, which is uh, highlighting the time period that the bishop is bringing up. And um, let me just show you for the camera, because I don't have time to put it over there. I don't want to hold the bishop up. This, is, uh, this book was put together by Moses Hades, so-called you. Uh, Imperial Rome, the great ages of man, a history of the world's cultures. So this is not a comic book. This is uh, edited and put together by Time Life Books, one of the largest book publishing companies on planet Earth. Moved. See what? Uh, bizarre games for gladiators. Mm -hmm. Hail Emperor. Those who are about uh, right. to die salute you. Now move on down because this is what the bishop was bringing out. It says, the more unusual the contest, the better the Romans liked it. Gladiators often fought with mismatched weapons. Didn't you just read that? Because I heard that when I was going yeah, up the stairs. Little dagger. Little daggers. So what did it say? Gladiators often fought with mismatched weapons. Negroes, a rare sight in Rome. Wait a minute now. <laughs> Why do they put right behind the word Negroes a rare, rare sight in Rome? Yeah. Because that's to throw you off. There you go. That's right the point there. of that. So they, they can't just put the truth in there without throwing something in there to knock the Negro off his horse. Mm -hmm. So... They said a rare sight in Rome. Ain't nothing rare about what we're about to see. The gladiators were Negroes, right? Yep. But in case that ain't enough, get the bottom of the get get the writing at the bottom. See what it says? A triumphant lion brought to the pitch of madness, brought to a pitch of madness by starvation, prepares to devour a fallen what? Gladiator. Gladiator. Now move over to the picture. Let's see the gladiator that has fallen to the victimizing uh, the lion that was brought to a pitch of madness. Look at the hair on his head. That's black man. Right. Notice That's that they not right. The head, the eyes, the and eyes, all and all that. That's a Negro. Yep. But they wanted to disguise the fact that it's a Negro by knocking off very right. identifying features like lips and noses. There you go. That's so you see, they knocked it off, didn't they? Yep. These racist bastards got a lot to pay for. I'm going to call it for what it is, because that's what it is. The Most High sees what they're trying to do, but just like we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. the Most High sought for us to get this information and show it to our people. There you go. How y'all feel about that? All right, raise your hand and say aye if you like what we're showing you. Aye. All praise All to the praise. Most High, all right? All praises. So now, give me... Wait, 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 wait. I... There's more. There's more. Okay. There's more. <laughs> so I left hey, the vault upstairs, I want... so I just bought one. So now we went through the dark, <laughs> we're going into the dark ages. Now give me image of the black. I want to cover, it says image of the black. Now, this is a big gun. 
this right here. Now, you get some coons out there that put books together, and then they get confused. They get paid to be stupid because they can't. I say to myself, they can't be that stupid. Now, me and Deacon Yalsup did a breakdown on Judah, the 12 tribe breakdown, yes, sir. and we brought this book out. Yes, yes. So we're going to show you the book again. Uh, uh, Enoch? You got it? Show the cover of the book. Y'all going to wait. Wait, wait. Watch. Lean back now. You see, we don't just give you scripture. We're going to give you evidence to what we're saying. Look at that. Blow it up. Blow it up big. <laughs> this book is called The Image of the Black in Western Art from the Early Christian Era to the Age of Discovery, from the Demonic Threat to the Incarnation of Sainthood. Mm. Go pan up. Now, I want y'all to see. See how dark that brother is? Yep, that's it. Go on up, go on up. <laughs> Edited by David Bideman. Now, Henry Louis Gates Jr. is the brother, mm. but he's a paid brother. Let me tell you about some of these black scholars. They make me sick. He'll, I'm going to show you. Now, I forgot. I didn't take the picture, but we read it. Mm -hmm. Henry Louis Gates was confused over right. this. Yep. He was like, I don't understand what I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm going to show you all something. Go to the next picture now. Go to the next picture. Inside the book. Y'all see he's wearing chain mail, right? Yeah. This is a knight. That's letting you know that the knights of the round table, all that. They were all they were black. All black. That's and what they that's were called me. knights because they were jet black. It right. wasn't no blonde hair, blue eyed like. knights. Now, y'all see this? This confused me when I saw it. <laughs> I said, A V L U S. Now, this is all Latin here. Right. I said, now, you know, in Latin, their U's are like. V's. V's, right. So I said, this is A-U-L-U-S, all this. I'm like, all this. Because the top of the picture is cut. They don't show the whole thing. Mm. I said, well, why is there a black man with a sword going through a white man's head? This court, I said, what the hell is going on? Or a demon's head. Go to the wording, L-U-S. Okay. Right here. Look at number 18. This is, that picture was 18. Read that, Isaac. Number 18, decorated initial, florist, exposito, in ex, e, e, uh, ex, epistolis poli, volume 2, 67V. Now, who can tell me what epistolis poli means? Y'all should know. The, the apostle, apostle Paul. the epistle of Paul. Right. Go back yeah. to the picture now. Right. The this was the Paul. scriptures in Latin. I said, they are the devil the Bible speaks of. <laughs> they are truly yeah. evil people. And that damn Henry Louis Gates, the Lord going to get him too. Why on the letters of Paul is there a Negro right. with a sword going through a demon's head? I'm like, wow. <laughs> These, they got a lot. They are covered up so much of our history. Now give me the next picture. So you mean to tell me Paul was a white man? He just felt like, I just want to put a Negro in my writings here. Right. You, that's like a rare evil. sight in Rome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 114 to 16. Statue of St. Maurice from 1240 to 1250. Cathedral of St. Maurice and St. Catherine Choir. Now we're going to look at St. Maurice, who was a knight. Come on. Give me the full body picture first. This is St. Maurice, a knight. Okay, jet black. You can exit out of here right there. I want that one right there. You zoom in. There you go. Look at this. Get a white man out of Get a white man out of that. You going to tell me King Austin was white folks? You're crazy. You look like my uncle. <laughs> Give me the next headshot. Yeah, you see they try to break his nose off. They said, well, you broke his nose off, but he's black as hell. How are we going to cover that up? And look at his lips. They'd have to break the lips off too. They got a lot to pay for. Hiding all our history. Now, there's some more pictures, too, I put in there. I want you to see something. And what they did in this book, y'all, what's up? In this book, all of the knights that were black, they said it's St. Maurice, although they had a different coat of arms, right, right. different family crest. Right. I'm like, no, it's because whatever your family crest is, that represents your family. Mm. This guy had a different family crest, but didn't look what it says. St. Maurice. Statue from Nietzsche in a central... I'm like, no, That's no. to throw you off. Look at the, the different armor. 
Okay, look at the armor. This is another black man with armor. Why are black men wearing armor? Because right, right. we were the knights. <laughs> now get mad and call your mama. No, there were no black people ruling the door. Shut up. We got the proof. We got the evidence. Look, look at this. Here's another one. D different armor, different family crest. And he says, oh, that's another picture of St. Maurice. I'm like, no, I'm not. I might not be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I ain't dumb as hell. Look, statue of St. Maurice. Look, there's a total different armor, different family crest. I'm like, no. And look, wait, 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 go back down. Go down, go down, go down, go down. Uh, see, 157, that's the paint on the right. 156 says Statue of St. Maurice. 157 says St. Maurice and his companions. Let's look at that picture of Maurice and his. What color are those men? Black. They're all black. And look, armor on. All these black guys with armor on. And look, a different coat of arms got a face on a shield. Look at this. Black men. That's why they don't want us on Channel 7, CNN, NBC. They go say, oh, you can come on, but don't bring none of this evidence. That's why they want to own all the networks. Exactly. They said Cosby can't own nothing. Mm -hmm. Oprah had to sell like 25% of her yep. uh, network. So we were the knights. We were the rulers. We got the proof. We got the evidence. You ain't, there's no more lying to us. You can't put the wool over our eyes no more. Can't buy us off. You can't buy us off either. Yeah. Now, I think that was the exile of all of this now. We showed y'all the proof. Y'all understand what we showed y'all? Do y'all like what we showed y'all? Yes, All right, let's get some more. Give me Spain. Early Spanish manuscript. You know this you, one. You get ready to do it to them. Extra heavy. Extra heavy. Because you know, watch this. They say the Moors that ruled Spain were Muslim. I'm going to show you there's a problem with that. Give me the cover. Give me the cover. Look at this. Early Spanish manuscript illumination. This was put together by John Williams. <laughs> now that's the cover. I want to go inside the book now for the same picture. The cover alone is heavy. Do y'all know what y'all looking at on the cover? Because the bishop going to go into it. But do y'all see what y'all see? All right. Okay. Go in. Okay. Yeah, now y'all see you got the angels on top. You got the cherubim on the side in the middle and Christ in the middle. Christ in the middle. The cherubim on either side of him, right and left. And arc two archangel, possibly Gabriel and Michael, on the top. Let's read what the words say. Go to the wording. Let me show you. When we say the white man is the devil, we mean that thing. When God says they're the synagogue of Satan, he means that thing. Hey, they don't believe when we be telling them that the, that the so-called white man tries his best to just make you see what you're not seeing. Right. <laughs> Captain Isaac, can you do us the honors and read this? Yes, sir. You want it from the top? Yep. Christ in majesty. This is referring to the picture that we just showed you. Christ, whose darkened flesh tones... Now give him an almost Negroid cast. Do you see this? An almost Negro. They, they lie in all. <laughs> see? <laughs> there you go. That's the example right there. When they said a rare sight in Rome, they're doing the same Jedi mind trick right here. Give him an almost Negroid cast. Is shown and thrown between two cherubs within a great. Can we go back to the picture? <laughs> and almost Negro. It looks Negro to me. You got to zoom in on the different parts of it. Zoom in so they can see the eyes and the hair and all that. They got to see all that. Look so, that. <laughs> Bishop, so when it says Christ in majesty, mm -hmm. Christ whose darkened flesh tones give him an almost Negroid cast. So you looking at it and you say he's Negro. But the white man said, no, no, no. No, don't be fooled. <laughs> don't be fooled. He might look black, but he's not quite black. You almost went for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you say you almost went for it, but I'm just letting you know he's not quite black. He's really a white he's man. He's really a, a white man whose flesh tones are darkened. Yeah. That's what they do. You went, you went to sleep. So when you first looked at it without the racist writing, right. Christ That's is black. What it is. You said, Christ is black. Oh, my goodness. White man said, ho, oh, ho, don't get too happy. His flesh tones appear 
like he's a Negro, then but he's not quite Negro. <laughs> <laughs> he went back to sleep. He went back to sleep again. <laughs> so, what you got? Uh, I thought what you got. No, we're finished with this. I got to go along with this. Go ahead. So tie it together. It's going to tie in these two together. The, the knights and this. Go out, sent you. Sent you something. They found something. It's a slate carving they found. A slate carving that's sixth century. Now, there's a movie I watched. I tell you how to watch. It's called King Arthur. Not, not the old ones. The recent one. You know what I'm talking about? The most. I ain't see it, but see it's good. The most recent King Arthur. Now, I watch it. I'm like, this is good. The power of his hand, the sword. So I'm like, I know King Arthur's black. So I watch it. I envision how he originally looked. Now, blood up some. This King Arthur of Arthurian, Arthurian legend was a black man. This is common knowledge, by the way. You can type this up. It says it all over the place. It says, so claims Jethro Hoy of Tengai, whatever, Tintagai, Cornwall, following the discovery of an ancient slate carving hitherto hidden among the ruins of a 6th century Cornish coastal settlement. It was a slate, a carving of someone, someone's images on it. The carving is currently under lock and key, of course, in a Hatton Garden safety deposit box, Mr. Hoy told reporters, where it should be as safe as houses, in theory at least. It's probably the most significant archaeological discovery since they found Richard III in a Leicester car park. It's a discovery that will have profound implications on the entire concept of British nationalism. It came as a bit of a shock to me as did finding out that Jesus Christ probably wasn't a white bloke with flowing blonde tresses. So he realized that Christ is a black man, this guy, this archaeologist. And he goes, but it's quite clear from the slate that they found that King Arthur was a black man because he's got black features and dreadlocks. And furthermore, Queen Guinevere, who is also depicted on the slate, appears to be of either Chinese or Japanese origin. But I don't care about her. The point is, he's depicted on the slate as a black man with locks in his hair. So that goes back to um, St. Maurice. That goes back to all the other knights. So King Arthur and all the knights at the round table, all of them are black men. All of them. And they have a pick, they have a slate, a carving of his face in a slate that they have locked. If you don't find it, that's not for us to see or to know. Exactly. We're going to read the scriptures and reveal all this stuff, too. Don't think we, don't, we ain't got it. Now, watch this. Give me Job 30. So, if we were the knights at the round table and we were the great kings and queens and rulers of the dark ages, where was the white man? In caves. In caves. In caves. This is some history they don't want nobody to know. Read that for me, Captain Isaac. Job 30. Let's start at verse 1. Job chapter 30 and verse 1. But now, they that are younger than I have me in derision. So when Job says, they that are younger than I have me in derision, he's prophesying. Okay? They that are younger than I is talking about the white man. Now, you might ask, but weren't, didn't the white man come out first with Jacob and Esau? Yes. So when it says, they that were younger than I means... That we are God's what? His firstborn, his heir. Remember it says, Israel is my son, even what? My firstborn. So that's why Job says this. Read it again. But now, they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Job said, this particular race, he's talking about Esau, I would hate for them to sit with the dogs of my flock. Why? Because you turn your back, they're humping the dog. Oh, Come on. <laughs> Yea, where too might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished? For want and famine, they were solitary. For lack and famine, they were solitary. They were single out, right? Fleeing into the wilderness. Fleeing into, into the wilderness. Come on. In former time, desolate and waste. In former time, desolate and waste. This is not talking about during the time of Genesis because it said Esau was what? Rich. Here, it said they were solitary in former time, desolate and waste. Go ahead. Who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. Uh -huh. They were driven forth from among men. What did we do to them? We drove them forth from among us. We didn't want Esau around us. We kicked them out of Dodge. We pushed them into the caves of the Caucasus Mountains. That's the area of land we allowed them to live in. 
This is the history the white man don't want you to know. Read it again. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief. We chased them like they stole something. Go ahead. To dwell in the cliffs of the valleys. Now that's how you know it's the white man. Read it again. To dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks. What did Obadiah say about Esau? They that dwell in the clefts of the rocks. It's talking about the same thing. Hey, Bishop, what you're reading there is heavy because it goes with Obadiah. What did we do? It said we cried after them as after a thief. As after a thief. That's what it says in Obadiah, the fifth verse. It says, if thieves came to thee and robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Because this man will steal till he can't steal no more. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that's the kind of thief he is. So we did not want that kind of person, that, that, that kind of people around us. Exactly. When it says destined away, it says Malachi 1 and 3. We are exactly. impoverished. Exactly. We will build the desolate places. Yep. Go ahead. Verse 7. Among the bushes they, they braid. Under the nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools. Yea, children of basement. You know what base means? Like the basement. You can't get no lower. They are the base men. Go ahead. They were viler than the and earth. they were viler than the earth. Read. And now am I their song? Now they conquered us. Now they're mocking us. Go ahead. I am their byword. I am their byword. That's what they call us niggas, spicks. So this whole thing is prophetic that Job was talking about. Bishop, it's a viler than the earth. When you, got, when you got a man on television, that yeah, he's up there, and, and, and in different media, Trying to pass laws for men to marry animals. That's vile. Mm -hmm. That's vile. That's despicable. Exactly. And trying to make it normal for a man and a boy to be together. Exactly. So now, <laughs> what I want y'all to write this down. During the time from the Maccabees to Christ, you had the, uh, the Herodians, the Herods. That's what they were called, those converts. Now, during the Dark Ages... This, these Edomites that dwelt in the cliffs of the rock were called Khazars. Go back to Jewish civilization. Put the cover of the book back on there. I want the cover. Third sources. We're going right back to this book here. The picture history of Jewish civilization. Now give me the section where it talks about the Khazars. Who dwelt in the cliffs of the rocks in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Let's see what the scholars say. I don't know. Let's just see what they say. Oh, you guys are racist. No, we're not. We're truth speakers. We speak truth to power. All right, Isaac. Blow it up big. I want to highlight a section. Then a section I got a line. It's page 95. Write down the page in case y'all order the book. You better hurry up because what's going to happen is these books might start to rise in price. Or disappear completely. Page 95. The Khazars. Numerous tribes in the Arabian Peninsula and in the various lands of the Near and Middle East adopted Judaism. The most famous of these were the Khazars. The land of the Khazars in southern Russia extended from the Caspian Sea to the Black Sea. That's the Caucasus Mountain area. Go ahead. As far as Crimea, the Khazars were a semi-nomadic pagan tribe whose chief was the Kagan. Kagan. And, the, mm -hmm. and the, at the beginning... Of the 8th century, the Khazars became very strong by virtue of their domination of the trade route between the Byzantine Empire and the Far East. They had a, they, where they were located was the best area uh, when it came to trade to get to the other side. They had to go through the Caucasus Mountains area. So they wanted to get the Cajun Bullen and these people on their side. That's what we were doing later on. Go ahead. For this reason, both the Byzantine emperors and the Baghdad calif caliphs were interested in cultivating the Khazars and in bringing them under their influence by winning them over to their religion. So the Baghdad Caliphs were Islam, was Muslims. Go ahead. Paganism was on its last legs. Cajun Bullen of the Khazars, who reigned over his people in the middle of the 8th century, decided to, aban to abandon his pagan faith, but could not make up his mind what new faith to adopt. There are stories of the efforts of the Muslim caliph and the Christian emperor of Byzantium to win over the Cajun to their belief. They sent delegations to him with letters and expensive gifts. So once we ran them out, centuries later we said, you know what? We need them damn bastards over there. <laughs> this is what happened. Go ahead. 
accompanied by men learned in their religion to influence Bullen. The confused Kagan ordered a Christian and a Muslim to conduct a debate to establish whose faith was better. The debates lasted for a long time without concrete results. Give me the next page, 96. Page 96 we want now. I'm going to follow up on this. The Cajun noticed that both the Christian and the Muslim debaters referred to the Jewish Torah to support their arguments. The, the Christian priests admitted that the Jewish religion was superior to that of Muhammad. And the Muslim imam asserted that Judaism was better than Christianity. This being the case, the Cajun decided to adopt the faith of the Jews. He summoned a Jewish scholar to teach him the Torah. Bullen then had himself and his officers and soldiers circumcised. So notice the conversion. First, during the time of John Hycranus, okay, doing with the Herods in them. Now, during the 8th century, okay, this is when the Edomites, the Caucasians, that whole group of them became Jewish. Everybody see that, right? Okay, well, all righty, then give me Malachi. Give me Malachi chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. Malachi chapter 1, 1 through 4. The book of Malachi chapter 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau? Uh-huh. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the and, dragons. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the world. Read, that, read the whole thing. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. When was this talking about, brothers? During the Dark Ages. That's what we were just reading with the Khazars. That's what we were just reading in Job chapter what? Chapter 30, we read verse 1 through 8. That's what Job was talking about. We know it's not during the time of Jacob and Esau because Esau was what? He was rich. Here, it's saying what, Isaac, again? And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. But we will return and build the desolate places. When did they return and rebuild, brothers? The Renaissance. That means rebirth. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. They shall call Edom the border of wickedness. Go ahead. And the people. And the people. Not the person, but the people. That includes men, women, boys, and girls. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Indignation, righteous hatred for how long, brothers? Now, give me the next book. Pay attention. 13th tribe. Now they're going to get mad with this book. I told you, once we go from the Bible, we're going to give you some secondary sources, third sources. Get mad now. The 13th tribe, written by a so-called Jew. Y'all can order this. Arthur Kosler, the 13th tribe, and once he wrote this, they, they said his wife and him committed suicide, but that's a lie. They were assassinated. Mm -hmm. Arthur Kosler, the 13th tribe. Let's go inside the book. Now, this is a so-called Jewish man, a convert, who searched out his Jewishness. His, he said, let me research my ancestry. <laughs> they didn't have Ancestry.com no. at the time. Mm -mm. He said, let me do some research, heavy research. Hey, y'all don't, the, the title of the book should strike you. The 13th tribe. How many tribes are in the nation of Israel? So what, in order for the white man to be a Jew, you have to add a tribe. That's what he's saying. He's saying he's right. He's being sarcastic. That's why they killed him. <laughs> Blow it up. Now, this is page 17. I want the pages in order. All right, brothers? Captain Isaac, just read the highlighted parts. Let's blow it a big. And I want the people at home who are watching to, to see it. This is not racist rhetoric. We're reading Bible facts. Mm -hmm. We're giving you historic facts. Yeah, they know that. Facts. Not something we put together. Nothing that we concocted. Read that, Captain Isaac. Page 17. This was written before the full extent of the Holocaust was known. But that does not alter the facts 
the fact that the large majority of surviving Jews in the world is of Eastern European and thus perhaps mainly of Khazar origin. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came not from the Jordan, but from the Volga, not from Canaan, but from the Caucasus. <laughs> Jump down. The right. story of the Khazar Empire as it slowly emerges from the past begins to look like the most cruel hoax which history has ever perpetrated. And you know who's really pushing that? Channel 7. All your networks push that these people are the biblical Jews. Yep. That's what they do. That's the cruelest hoax. This is what this man and his wife found out. Go me the next page now. Give me the next page. I forgot what number it is. That's the next page. Page 39. Read that for us. Page now, the Guz was another group of them that lived in the Caucasus Mountains. Let's, let's just see what it says. Page 39. The Guz do not wash themselves after defecating or urinating, nor do they bathe after seminal pollution or on other occasions. They refuse to have anything to do with water. Y'all don't see them on Eastern Parkway about to say, with know the your... danger fall on their jackets and they don't bathe. Y'all don't know that about them? Ha! And this guy smell... ain't lying. No, he ain't lying. Y'all smell them. Y'all know that. No? Go ahead. They refuse to have anything to do with water. Now remember, we didn't write this. A white man wrote this. A so-called Jewish man. Go they ahead. refuse to have anything to do with what it said. If it has water in it, we don't want it. <laughs> they refuse to have anything to do with water, particularly in winter, when the goose, the guz, I'm sorry, when the guz commander in chief took off his luxurious coat of brocade to don a new coat the mission had brought him, they saw that his underclothes were fraying apart from dirt. You see, that, you see that part where it says what that the mission had brought him? Remember, we were trying to get him gifts to buy him over? That's what this is talking about. We were trying to persuade them to come on, to come on our side. That's what that's talking about. Fraying apart from dirt, for it is their custom never to take off the garment they wear close to their bodies Draws. until it disintegrates. Y'all don't see them wearing the same clothes every day? They wear the same, and that includes their drawers. That's what he's saying. He ain't lying. He's telling hey, the hey, truth about his You got to read it again. When the, when the girl's commander in chief took off his luxurious coat to, to brigade, to don a new coat the mission had brought him, they saw that his underclothes were fraying apart from dirt. So y'all know what the, <laughs> the, 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 you see, which the mission had brought him. Right. The mission is talking about is what we read in. Earlier in Jewish civilization, remember you had the Muslims and the Christians trying to win them over. That's what this whole book is going into. Go ahead. Another Turkish tribe, the Bashkirs, shave their beards and eat their lice. They search the folds of their undergarments and crack the lice with their teeth. When yeah. Ibn Fadlin watched the Bashkir do this, the latter remarked to him, they are delicious. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. See, they got to put it in the mind. When they even Fadlin, uh, Fadlin watched the Bakar do this, he looked, what, what, what the hell? What are you doing? That's, that's, and the dad turned to him and he said, they're delicious. <laughs> Give me the next page. And he cracked the life with his teeth. <laughs> okay, I, don't, I didn't highlight anything here. Okay, Isaac, can you read this quick? Yes, sir. Okay. Page 180. Israeli or Polish who independently from each other have argued that the bulk of modern Jewry is not of Palestinian, but of Caucasian origin. You see that? You see that? So their scholars are telling you they're not the Jews. The, Go ahead. The mainstream of Jewish migrations did not flow from the Mediterranean across France and Germany to the east and then back again. The stream moved in consistently westerly direction from the Caucasus through the Ukraine into Poland and thence into Central Europe. Hence, you got all those people during World War II. That's what he's talking about. They didn't, the Mediterranean, remember, the land of Israel is against the Mediterranean Sea. So he said they didn't come that way. They came in a westward direction from the Caucasus westward. Yep. 
Go ahead. When that unprecedented mass settlement in Poland came into being, there were simply not enough Jews around in the West to account for it. While in the East, a whole nation was on the move to new frontiers. It would, of course, be foolish to deny that Jews of different origin also contributed to the existing Jewish world community. Jews of different origin. The numerical ratio of the Khazar to the Semitic and other contributions is impossible to establish. But the cumulative evidence makes one inclined to agree with the, with the consensus of Polish historians that in earlier times the main bulk of, of originated from the Khazar country and that accordingly the Khazar contribution to the genetic makeup of the Jews must be substantial and in all likelihood dominant. That's why they cover everything. Give me the next page now. Okay, read the highlighted part. Whatever the Israeli citizens' racial origins and whatever illusions they entertain about them, their state exists de jure and, and de facto and cannot be undone except by genocide. Wow! What did he, y'all didn't understand what he's saying. Who understands what this dude just said? Whatever the Israeli citizens' racial origins or whatever illusions they entertain about them, their state, meaning the state of Israel, exists de jure and de facto. I mean, it's a matter of fact, it exists now and cannot be undone except by genocide. He's saying you have to kill all of them. Now, he said that's the only way it's going to get. That's what the white man said. That's not what we said. That's what the white man said. Was that the last page that I put up there? Wowzy, wow, wow, wow. So now, 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 we got to talk about the state of Israel, 1948. Give me the video. How was the state of Israel uh, created? You can X out of this. You can X out of this. How was the state of Israel created is the video. Wow. The white man said, mm -hmm. the only way you can get rid of that madness is you have to Right. Now let's look at this out. video. It's a short video. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Come on. Read that, Captain Isaac. Creation of the State of Israel. Following the defeat of the Ottoman Empire in World War I, the British assumed control of Palestine. In November 1917, the British government issued the Balfour Declaration, announcing its intention to facilitate the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. Stop. Following the defeat of the Ottoman Empire in World War I. Now, the... the Balfour Declaration was writ written in November 1917. The British went in December of 1917 and wiped out the Ottoman Empire that was there, destroyed them. So well, it was one month. It took them one month. Now, how did the Ottomans get the land of Jerusalem? Remember during the time, remember the Crusades? Mm -hmm. We were fighting the Arabs. We lost. There's a movie with Orlando Bloom. In that book you read earlier, Jewish Civilization, you said that you sent the Ishmael against us. Remember? Right, exactly. In Jewish Civilization, it talks about Ishmael coming against us. In a movie called something like The Kingdom with Orlando Bloom. Kingdom. It's called The Kingdom. Called The Kingdom. He's fighting against the Muslims in the movie. The Muslims won the last battle. That's why you got the Palestinians, so-called Palestinians, in there today. That's what they said. This is our land. Why? Because they conquered the real Jews, us. That's what they were talking about. So now, what I want you to see is that the Balfour Declaration was written in 1917 regarding a homeland for these Khazars. They didn't get it until 1948, but it was already in the works. Right. So now, give me the next video. It's called Birth of Israel. Birth of Israel, Balfour Declaration. In November of 1917, the British government did something which was incredibly strange and mysterious. A Briton, which is now the prince of the secular world. The secular world takes religion out of politics. And Britain is the prince of the secular world. 
Britain issues a declaration known as the Balfour Declaration. In November 1917, that it is the intention of His Majesty's government to work for the establishment of a Jewish national home in the Holy Land. Did you hear that? Why would a secular state which leads the world of secular states declare its intention to work for the establishment of a Jewish national home, meaning a Jewish state, in the Holy Land. Two months later, this was October 1917, in December 1917, it is a British army led by General Allenby which defeats the Ottoman Islamic army and liberates the Holy Land. And when Allenby entered into Jerusalem, the British general declared, Today, the Crusades are over. Oh? Oh, but the Crusades were supposed to have been Christian wars. You're not a Christian state, you're a secular state. How come a secular Britain is continuing a crusade started by the Pope a thousand years before? That's strange. That is incredibly strange. Between 1918 and 1948 it is the island of Britain which ruled over the Holy Land on a mandate conferred by the League of Nations and during that period of time with tremendous deception while pretending to keep the Jews out, Britain opened the doors for the Jews of Europe to enter into the Holy Land and to reclaim it as their own. In between came the interlude of Adolf Hitler, which speeded up the movement of the Jews from Europe to the Holy Land. In 1948, Britain did something strangest of all. Britain is a state with a tremendous commitment to the rule of law. But in 1948, when Britain left the Holy Land, she left like a thief in the dark. For the first time, for the only time in British history, there was no legal transfer of power from Britain to the successor state. Stop right there. Pause in 19... So, did you hear what he said? Britain conquered the Ottoman Empire that was in Jerusalem. Then in 1948, Britain just left and let the Khazars have it. When there was no transfer of power, nobody saying, we're giving this to you, they're the same people. That's one race working together. Go ahead. 48, Britain acted as a midwife for the baby to be born. The European Jewish state of Israel. You heard that? The European Jewish state. That's some heavy stuff. Cut. Give me Ezekiel 35 and 2. Now we got to get, let's get back to the primary source of information, the Bible. Ezekiel 35, verse 2. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35 and verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. Uh-oh. Who is Mount Seir, brothers? Israel. 
Esau. Go ahead. And prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. Jump over to verse 10. We're going to read 10 through 15. Come on. Because thou hast said, These two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. So the two nations and the two countries is talking about the land of Israel, and where else, brothers? America. America. Remember, the northern kingdom was given this part of the world. Remember that? Second Ezra 13, 40 through 45. That's the reason why... But that's the reason why Ronald Sanders named this area the promised lands. Exactly. Read it again, Captain Isaac. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine. That's Israel and America's. Go ahead. And we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. When it says, whereas the Lord was there, they took Israel as what? Jews, so-called Jewish people. And they took the Americas as Christians. That's what it means, whereas the Lord was there. They said, the Lord is with us. We're his people now. We're Jewish over there, and we're Christians over here. That's what it means. Read. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger, and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. Who's the them? The Israelites. The twelve tribes. That's the them. Go ahead. And I will make myself known among them. When I have judged thee. God is going to make himself known amongst the 12 tribes when he has judged Esau. Read. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, they are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. See that? It's desolate. We can have, God's given it to us now. That's the blasphemy. Go ahead. Thus with your mouth ye have boasted against me, and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Thus saith the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. Uh -oh. as, though, as though, as thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate. Watch this. So will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all Idumia. Who's Idumia, brothers? Esau. That's right. Read. Even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Give me chapter 36 and verse 5. 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, thus saith the Lord God. That was it. So now, notice it says, All Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. This is why Gamal Abdul Nasser, come on, pay attention over there. Give me, I just put something up from uh, Captain Yadon sent it to me regarding Gamal Abdul Nasser. Watch this. He gave a speech in Arabic and people had translated his speech. He said a heavy statement. Okay. This was during the Six Day War. I believe it was around 1967. Read that, Captain Isaac. Gamal Abdel Nasser, second president of the United Arab Republic, formerly president of the Republic of Egypt. The Europeans claiming to be Jews are nothing more than Hebrew-speaking Gentiles. The late president of Egypt, Gamal Abdel Nasser, stated on television, you the, Jews, you, the Jews, will never be able to live here in peace because you left here black but came back white. We cannot accept you. 1952. All right. So then later on after that, they had the Six-Day War. And America had uh, given the land of Israel so much technology, to, they wiped Egypt out in six days. They defeated them. Now, give me Joel chapter 3. We want verse 1 to 3. Back to the primary source of information, the Bible. <laughs> Joel chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in those, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. I mean, he's going to bring us, we're the captivity, back to our land again. Watch this. I will also gather all nations 
and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat means decision, valley of decision. God's going to make a decision. Go ahead. And will plead with them there for my people. So this whole third world's war is going to be about us. Go ahead. And for my heritage, Israel. And what happened to us? Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So the Bible's telling you that the real 12 tribes of Israel would be scattered in slavery and that the Gentiles have parted God's land. Read. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot. They made us breeders. They cast lots for us, meaning they bid for us. Go ahead. And sold a girl for wine. Go ahead. That they might drink. Meaning commit whoremongering. Go ahead. Yea. And what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Tyre and Zidon were African nations. Read. And all the coasts of Palestine. Palestine are the Arabs. That's who's in the land today. They were the Ottoman Empire. Those that were not defeated remain behind. Go ahead. Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. Recompense means payback. Judgment. Go ahead. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant so, things. So Tyre and Zidon and Palestine, they helped rob us of all our wealth. Go ahead. What happened to the wealth during the time of the Dark Ages? We were most, Even during that time, you had a, a king in Africa named Mansa Musa, who was one of the richest kings. Where's all that wealth? Tyre, Zidon, Palestine took it. And as you read down, there's going to be a third party they mentioned here too. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem. That's who the dark age kings and knights were. Go ahead. Have he sold unto the Grecians. Unto who? Unto the Grecians. The white man. Go ahead. That ye might remove them far from their border. Meaning they put us in slavery. That's what that means. Now, real quick, okay, every year or two, there are new movies based upon, I want you to think about what I'm about to say. Think, think about what I'm about to say. Give me Daniel 11. Daniel 11. Watch this. Every year or two, I believe it's every year, they put out new movies uh, revolving around World War II to keep the thought or the vision that they are the Jewish people of God, the Jews of the Bible. Every, think about what I'm saying. Every year there's a new movie. You got Schindler's List, Okay. They always do that. Read that, Daniel eleven fourteen. 14. Swindler's list, right? Daniel chapter 11, verse 14. Listen good to this. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. King of the south is the Ptolemy dynasty. Go ahead. Also the robbers of thy people. Listen good. Also the robbers of thy people. This is the so-called Jewish people. Read it again. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves. To establish the vision. To establish the vision that they are the people of God. Go ahead. But they shall fall. But they shall fall. Does it say fail or fall? Fall. Fall. Now watch this. Give me X-Men. Give me X-Men. I'm going to show y'all. Every year they put out movies trying to push that they... No, not that one. The next one. Wait a minute. Go back to that. I'm sorry. That might be it. Let me look at it. Yes, that is it. This give they always look for this. Is, listen, after they wrote that damn Balfour Declaration, it was written to the Rothschilds for 1917. Britain said, We're gonna work on it. Next month, they wiped out the Ottomans, took the land, held on to the land until they could get world sympathy. They said, We need world sympathy to get these people, these Khazars, these Edomites, our brothers, into the land. Let's uh, do some wars and start killing them. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. That, we'll get world sympathy. Then after that, it happened. Now, every year they put up movies, emotional movies. Now, many times we'll see movies like shit. We don't go to see that, but we'll look at something like X-Men. Even in movies about superheroes and stuff, they put it in there. Watch this movie. Watch, watch some of y'all start going to tears. I can remember sitting in the theater. I'm like, why are they going on damn old World War II? They take away Eric, Eric from his mama. Look, the six pointed star. Wow. Demons. Demons. 
hear the music change. This music and the crying, the screaming, the rain, yep. emotional. That's what it is. Drawing the Negro, he all sobbing in the seat. Now. Yeah. The mama's crying. <laughs> Look, everybody's crying. Some of y'all right now wiping your tears. This is we are the Jews. We are the Jews. Please feel sorry for us. Love us. So the brothers is like, yeah, the needles, power's coming. But the thought in the back of your head is, they are the Jewish people. They are the Jews. So those of you that would not willingly go to see Schitler's List, you go to X-Men and go, right, and get the same. The Cut that. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you all a question now. Magneto hunted down those Nazi war criminals. You know there's Jewish groups today. Their job, like Mossad, thank you, hunting down Nazi war criminals. Give me the scripture about that. Give me the scripture about that. No, but no hands are up. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 32. Here's the state of the real biblical Jews. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Amalek fits this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. You hear that bottom precept? There shall be no might. What type of might? Military might. To do, that, what we to do that. Political might. Economic might. We would have no power to do what we just saw. So they're not the biblical Jews. Everybody understand that? You got those Jewish groups like Mossad. They go around the world and hunt them Nazis down. That's what their job. They don't fit nothing the Bible says. They're not the Jews of the Bible. We are. You could tell your Ashkenazi friends that too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, the, the short for Nazis. Yeah. Give me Zechariah 12, verse 2 and 3. So Britain, the League of Nations, wanted to take the land of Israel on, set up an imposter race there. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 2 and 3. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. You hear what the prophecy says? The Lord said, I'm going to make Jerusalem a burdensome stone to all the people that burden themselves with it, and they shall be cut in pieces. So the League of Nations, you set a group of people up in there? You got the Palestinians, Palestinians up in there? Everybody fighting about that land? The Lord said they're all going to be cut in pieces because that's not their land at all. Give me Baruch 4, 31 to 35. And what they often do, because you got the Christians, they'll also, they'll do Bible uh, videos and movies and try to twist scriptures to say it fits these people in Israel today. And it doesn't fit. Read that. Baruch 4, 31 to 35. So remember, Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. So now we just dealt with the place being a burdensome stone to the white man. <laughs> now let's see about the people. Baruch chapter 4, verse 31. Miserable are they that afflicted thee, and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons. That's why wherever you got large portions of, large portions of Israelites, there's always trouble in those cities. Always. Why? Because of the prophecy. Read it again. Miserable are they that afflicted thee, and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons. 
For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. Right, because she's going to be, America's going to be destroyed. Europe, all these places that took us in captivity, those places are going to be cut in pieces. Was that it? Yes, sir. Give me Zechariah 9. So for years, the United States Embassy has been in modern-day Tel Aviv. The ancient name for Tel Aviv was Ashdod. Watch what the Bible says. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9 and verse 6. Verse 6. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. You hear what the prophecy says? The people that's over there in Ashdod, which is modern-day Tel Aviv, bastards. Bastards. Why? What makes them bastards? Remember what it said in Hebrews 12? It says, give me that Hebrews 12. It might be verse, check eight. About if you don't get chastening. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse eight. But if he be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So now, when has the nation of Edom paid for their crimes? When? Never. They've never paid for their crimes. Never. That's what the Bible says. They are bastards. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. So now President Trump has been told to move the embassy to Jerusalem. I'm going to say it again. President Trump has been told to move the United States embassy from Tel Aviv, Ashdod, to Jerusalem. Give me the article. I think I put it up. It's called the world condemns the United States shift. Look for that article. It's a quick one. I have determined that it is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Look at the language. It will be looked at differently from the Israeli side and from the Palestinian Arab and broader world side. When Russia recognized that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel earlier this year in a statement, they said West Jerusalem, not Jerusalem as a whole. President Trump talked about Jerusalem, the capital city, but he did not use the Israeli words, which is eternal, undivided. While previous presidents have made this a major campaign promise, they failed to deliver. Today, I am delivering. President Trump is right. All the waivers from President Clinton on have not helped the peace process. So in some senses, he's right. There needs to be new thinking. But I think there is a sense in which this new thinking may not solve a very old problem. The United States remains deeply committed to helping facilitate a peace agreement that is acceptable to both sides. And when he came to that, that mantra, the two-state solution, he did not say that I, the President of the United States, believe in a two-state solution. He said two-state solution if both sides agree to it. So he stepped back from it. There will, of course, be disagreement and dissent regarding this announcement. But we are confident that ultimately we will arrive at a peace Peace can only has to be made between two peoples, and one side feels very aggrieved and angry tonight, and the other side feels very grateful. It's not fertile terrain to try to move forward. Right, the Khazars are very happy over there. Amalek, they're very happy. Esau, why? Because by the United States moving uh, the United States embassy there, that means they're on whose side? So-called Israel's side. And the Palestinians is mad because, but what about us? Right, we already said to hell, you're going to make it work. Exactly. So now, watch this. Give me 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3. Y'all know this one. They talk about peace. They want to make peace. Y'all be careful with that peace. This is what the Bible says. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. There's not going to be no peace. And when they think there's going to be peace, the most high, remember what we read earlier. I'm going to see who's thinking. It said, the men of thy confederacy, what? Are confederate against thee. They are, they are going to. That's why you got Britain is upset. Germany is upset. A lot of these nations are upset. They're trying to lay low now because America got the power. But the most high is telling us they're going to turn on America. They're going to turn. Watch this. Isaiah 25 and 1. We're almost done. We're almost done. 
book of Isaiah, chapter 25 and verse 1. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Wait, they mad about Jerusalem being that. Listen, Jerusalem is going to be the capital. But the Lord is going to say, give me that quick before we read this. Jeremiah 3, 17 or 7. 17? Jeremiah 3, let me hear 17. Where is it? Somebody find it for me. Somebody come look at this. Jeremiah yeah. chapter 3, verse 17. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. That's it right there. Here's the prophecy when the Lord, when the 12 tribes of Israel are reestablished in the earth under Christ, our King, our Messiah. Read it again. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. That's going to be the throne of the Lord. That's going to be the capital of the whole planet earth. Go ahead. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it, uh -huh. to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. You know why? Because we're going to force, force through death and bloodshed all nations to submit and acknowledge that there's that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords. Like when it says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Y'all think the nation's going to do that willingly? We're going to have to break them. That's going to be the fun part. That's going to be the fun, That's part. The fun part. Did he say, did they say no? Says the, <laughs> oh, they said no. Oh, it's on now. Yeah, We're going to break the nations and force them. Go back to Isaiah 25. Isaiah 25 in verse 1. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. So all of God's counsels of old time, from the time of Genesis, it says are faithfulness and truth. Go ahead. And that's what we have to believe and understand, because we see the evidence. Go ahead. For thou hast made of a city in heap, of a defense city a ruin. A palace of strangers to be no city. That's what he's done with our homeland. Go ahead. It shall never be built. Go ahead. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor. We are the poor that he's going to be a strength to. Go ahead. A strength to the needy in his distress. A refuge from the storm. A shadow from the heat. When the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud. The branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. So the branches of the nations, America, Europe, Britain, Russia, they're all going to be brought low. Go ahead. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of morrow of wines on the lees well refined. What do y'all think this feast is about? The destruction. It's going, it's going to be a major sacrifice of their death. Go ahead. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering, cast over all people. You know what that cast of the covering, cast over all people? That Esau is the Jews. That the land, Holy Land belongs to them. That's a covering on everybody believes that crap. Except us. <laughs> Read that part again. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering, cast over all people. The white man is God. We can't do nothing without the white man. All that's going to be destroyed. Those thoughts we all got in our minds, I'm going to get rid of all that. Go ahead. And the veil that is spread over all nations. Because that veil is over all nations. Go ahead. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from from off all faces. And this is talking about the Israelite. He's doing this to us. Go ahead. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken. This whole thing is about Israel, what he's doing for us. Okay? We got to give the Lord a hand for that. All praises. All praises. Last scripture. Last two scriptures. Give me Daniel eleven forty five. <laughs> They say, oh, it's going to be the U.S. Embassy. Then another group of them say, no, we're going to build the temple, the third temple. Really? So is it the temple or the U.S. Embassy, or is it one and the same? Watch what the scriptures say. Daniel chapter 11, verse 45. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. That's talking about between the Mediterranean 
and the Dead Sea. That's talking about the, in the land of Israel. Read it again. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace. That's talking about Esau going to plant his tabernacle. Go ahead. Between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Ain't nobody going to help him. When that destruction comes on them, they want to build their tabernacle there. <laughs> Read on. 12 and 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. The Israelites. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation. The third world's war. Thermonuclear destruction. Go ahead. Even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. See that? At that time it says everyone is said... And at that time, thy people, who's thy people? The people of Daniel, the Israelites. And at that time, thy people, not all people, thy people shall be delivered to Israelites. Everyone that shall be found written in the book, meaning the book of life. That's what it's talking about. So before this week, there's a lot going on in the world. I pray that you brothers and sisters can glean something from today's lesson. And I pray that our Ashkenazi Friends who are online have gleaned something from today's lesson as well. We're the Jews and you're not. <laughs>、Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.